Hi guys, my name is Megan, welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a birth story tag. So this tag was actually created by a lady named Sarah. She has a really cool channel. It's called Sarah aka Mommy and I will link her channel down below. She's the one who created the tag and there's a playlist with all the other ladies who have done this as well. So my video will go in that playlist and I will link that down below as well. There's some really cool stories in there and so I thought it sounded pretty fun. I figured that I would do it too. So I have Sophia's full birth story up on the channel but I didn't even get around to filming that until she was six months old and now she's just a little over six months old. It sounds really fun to be a part of this tag and just like a lot of these ladies, I wasn't on YouTube when my daughter was born. So it's just a really cool way to get your story out there and on YouTube even though we weren't on YouTube when it happened. If you're new to my channel, I do motherhood and lifestyle videos and homesteading and we are remodeling our 100 plus year old farmhouse. And this is my daughter Sophia who is six months old and me and my husband Luke have been married for over two years so I would love it if you join the family. So there's 10 questions I'm going to be answering today and let's get right into it. I've only had one birth. I've had one, my one daughter Sophia but I'm really looking forward to having a bunch more births. I love kids. I want to have six or more kids. It was funny, when I was, I think I was like 12, and me and my friend used to say that we wanted 27 kids each. <laughs> so I'm not wanting that many anymore, but I think at least six is what I really want. I love kids and I love being pregnant. I don't so much love giving birth, but it is a really empowering experience. I had a vaginal delivery. I was so blessed to be able to do it that way just do it naturally. I'm very glad I didn't have to have a c-section and I'm really praying that I won't have to in the future. I did mine naturally and obviously whichever way you want to have your birth go is totally your choice but I have always been very for natural things and healthy things and I don't want to put any drugs in my system that may possibly affect the baby and I I'm so glad that I did it naturally. It was the most painful thing I've ever felt, but it was so empowering and such a cool experience. And I am definitely doing it naturally for all of my other children, if it's at all possible. It just really freaks me out thinking about having an epidural. I hate needles. I, it freaks me out having like some of my body not work. And I have always wanted to just do natural births, so that's what I went with. I had a home birth. When we first got married, I was planning on having my first baby in the hospital and then after that, future babies I would have at home once I kind of knew what I was doing. But then my sister-in-law got me hooked on this podcast called Indie Birth and they do free unassisted births, which is where they don't even have a midwife there. It's just by themselves, which is crazy. So I like totally binge listen to this podcast and I will link it down below because even though I didn't do a free birth, an unassisted birth, it got me brave enough to do a home birth. So I'm so glad I did. Hospitals really freaked me out. And I was so much more comfortable at home. I just was in my element. I could just, you know, I knew where everything was. If we needed something, it was right on hand. And then afterwards, it was so nice to just recover at home and not have to drive home. I didn't even take her in the car until she was like three weeks old. So that was really nice because I don't like taking her in the car. I'm getting a little bit better about it, but when she was first born, oh man, that was like, the scariest thing ever. I didn't have any huge complications. I mean, I guess there was some in that I did hemorrhage and I tore in three places and my tailbone got snapped. So yeah, I guess I guess those are some complications. Sophia was totally healthy because my tailbone was bent the wrong way from a horse training accident and then the midwife had to snap it back the other way. Uh, Sophia had some bruising on her head and face, but that was really minor and it went away after like a week. But I had it stitched up from my tears and I couldn't walk up the stairs for over a week. It was quite painful and the hemorrhaging was really scary. I'm really, really glad that I had a midwife there because I could have died, like literally, from that hemorrhaging. 
My funniest birth experience was, so I was planning on having a water birth and the midwife brought the big birth pool and it was frozen because it was the dead of winter when I had my baby and it was in her car for too long. So she had to set it up in front of the fireplace and let it thaw out. So that seemed like it took forever and I really wanted to get in the pool and then it finally got thawed out and they got it all filled up and I got in it and I was in there for maybe 10-15 minutes and then I started feeling the edges start to sag down and I was like so out of it from the pain that I didn't even like realize what was going on at first and then Luke and the midwife started freaking out a little bit and we realized that our kitten who had been playing around the edge of the pool had snagged it with her claw and popped it and Luke and my midwife Sandana had to rush around bailing the water out with five gallon buckets and I was trying to just <laughs> breathe through the contractions while all this chaos was going on. It was quite irritating when it first happened because I really wanted to experience a water birth but I guess there's always next time. <laughs> but that cat is really lucky that she's cute because that was quite annoying. <laughs> Me and Luke wanted to have a really private birth, so the only people who were there for Sophia's birth were Luke, my husband, and our midwife, Sandana. We may have more people there for future, or we may even have less if we decide to do an unassisted birth, and it'll only be me and Luke and possibly our kids. I don't know if I'm going to ever have my kids at the birth unless they're quite a bit older and they want to because I'm a screamer and I don't want to scare them to death. So only two people plus me at our birth for Sophia which was really quite special that you know, there wasn't like a huge crowd. And I'm really introverted, so I don't like having a ton of people around anyway. I was full term. I actually went two days past my due date, so I was 40 weeks and two days, which once I got to my due date and passed, I was really impatient. And hopefully next time I'll be a little bit better about being patient and just waiting for when the baby's ready. But I'm really glad that I didn't have to be induced or anything. I'm glad we waited for when Sophia decided she was ready to come out and she was nice and big and healthy and chubby so I got impatient and I was quite uncomfortable but in the long run I am glad that I went over and passed even. My labor was a total of 24 hours and some of that was um, just active labor that wasn't too bad and then the transition was about three hours and then the pushing stage was about three hours. So, quite a long labor. I'm hoping that future labors are shorter. That was my first birth, so they are longer the first time. So I'm hoping that that's the case, is that the future ones are shorter, because that was not very fun having it that long. I was so tired. I would like literally fall asleep between pushing contractions, which is hard to do. My recovery time was about six weeks I think. My midwife came and checked me at about four weeks and she cleared me for just regular activity intercourse and she said I was completely healed up and looking good. She said she actually healed really fast for how much I had torn so that was kind of nice. I guess my body's built for having babies but even though she cleared me and I was still looking pretty good down there it was still uncomfortable. Sometimes I would get like twinges if I was walking around too long or something like that or if we would have intercourse it was pretty uncomfortable. So what I did was I used Primrose oil capsules and we just put a capsule up there and then after like a, another week or two, at about six weeks postpartum, I was feeling really back to normal. It wasn't uncomfortable anymore down there and I was getting close to back to normal. I mean, obviously my body will never be how it used to be. And I have heard that it takes, as long as it took to grow the baby, is how long it takes for your body to totally go back to feeling you know, 100% normal. So I'm just giving my body grace, but I'm still back to doing most activities and I'm feeling good. My thyroid, I have a thyroid issue and it did go really high after I had her. So that didn't help my recovery time, but I'm feeling really good now and I'm very grateful that I do feel good because she's a handful and she's very busy. So those are all 10 questions and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hearing a little bit more about it. So don't forget to go check out Sarah aka Mommy's channel and I will link the playlist with everyone else's birth story tag down in the description. I post three new videos a week on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday and I will see you next time. Bye! Hi! Are you cute or what? <laughs>